control net is an implementation which has been a game changer in this particular domain because it now allows us as developers to take more control of these diffusion models to generate images in different modularities and different forms here as you can see on the first image that's my original photo that was taken and then the three photos are the images which are generated by stable diffusion so the way it works and the reason it works is because of a module called control net which is an extra set of network neural network which goes alongside stable diffusion and it allows to dictate basically the control process and the creativity within stable diffusion so the way to control these is through different kind of models which are being trained via control net method so you can work with depth you can work with pose you can work with edge detection and you can also work with scribble the base idea is that it provides very fine grained control over the generation process and the advantage of control net is that this works for stable diffusion 1.5 models as well and the way to generate these images is also something which you can do for yourself without having any technical background about what stable diffusion is and what control net is as well because a lot of people are building open source ui on top of it which makes all of this process easier and more accessible to anyone who wants to use these models as an art form without having to understand python even for that matter you just need to run a command and you should be able to get this to this very easily for example this link is where i'm attaching a collab notebook which everyone can execute on their own for free for most of the cases and this is how the notebook looks like after it gets loaded so this ui is called an automatic 1111 web ui repository this is the most popular web ui which is the ready made web ui for using stable diffusion models so the way it works is this is a text prompt where you just type in what you want to generate and then hopefully if everything is connected and if everything is working together it generates that output for you the entire talk from here on onwards is just about how do we use these models to in different creative processes and in different photo editing and different image generation processes right so one of the advantages of the control net is let's say if you use a canny which is an x sort of an edge detection kind of algorithm like people in computer vision must be aware of it and then depth is a basically a 3d model kind of depth map which is having the complete 3d representation of the source image so here on the left hand side is the source image and then basically what we are trying to get the model to generate is in the text prompt we are providing a young man in a business suit wearing a black tie wearing a black suit and using that same pose almost with the same look it's able to generate a realistic photo of a human being right a little bit of magic is there to be honest right because a lot of it depends on the fine tune model that you start with and also a lot of it is depending on the quality of text you use to convey what you want the model to generate so it depends on two things right so yeah let's see so this is the output an apple right and like anyone can basically go and do it right now right you just need to click on that notebook open in collab and you get this ui and it's you just type this out and it will generate this for you right so this is stable diffusion 101 if you want to get started with stable diffusion right this this is what you can do to start it but as you can see right the quality of apple is not realistic it's not looking that good right which means that there are two things which you can do one is to change the base model which you are using to generate which is like maybe it could be sd 1.4 sd 1.5 or any fine tune model that someone else has provided in open source community or it could be that you can provide more detailing in the text itself so for example you can change it to a green apple or a red apple and it will automatically change to a green or a red apple right you can change it it's a basket of apple and it will, it will probably create a basket of apples right so it will depend on two things one is the fine tune model and the other one is the prompt itself right and the way the control net extension is going to work is i'll just give a very high level overview okay. um, but the way the control net extension is going to work is you provide the reference image in this control net drop down here and then from here you just need to say enable control net and then in pre processor you choose what kind of pre processors pre processors you want right so there are lot of pre processors and a lot of this ui can look confusing but just to begin with canny depth um what else open pose yeah these are the three main models to look at and like we'll be covering most of them as well in this talk and then the rest of the models you know you can explore later on and every model has a very powerful flavor and the powerful method by which they allow the con generation process control as we'll see 
right? But this is how you can use this. So let's say you want to use open post and let's say you want to just use open post. So just match open post, open post in both the drop downs here, which is says preprocessor and the model. So this is the model. Sorry, this is T2A adapter. We need to control net open post. Okay, so we need to use these two settings and just upload whatever image we want to give as a reference. So in this case, for example, it would be this image, right? And then we just write in the right prompt and it will generate the right inside of image. Um, so after the talk, obviously I'll share the slides and all the materials with you. So you'll find the prompt and the base model that I use to generate these images as well, so that you can reproduce these results on your own. So I'm not going into the details of prompt engineering and the model base. But everything is going to be embedded within this PNG file itself. That's the another advantage of using automatic UI to generate images because all the extra metadata in terms of how this image got created is already embedded in the PNG or JPG file itself. Another interesting use case for uh, depth that I found is that it allows for a lot of creative explorations. So for example, using a Coke bottle, I was able to generate a whiskey bottle, cartoon rocket and steel Roman figurine. So as you can see, it's very much holding the shape as just like a cold drink bottle, right? And this basically means that now you can use any custom arbitrary shape, any real world shape, or let's say if you are working in Blender or any 3D tools, you can use those shapes from that angle and then nudge the model to generate anything which looks very photorealistic and which looks very real. So for any creative use case also, the depth model could be used. And like, as I said, right, the way to generate all of these is let's say in the prompt, I would say that generate me a whiskey bottle. I'll upload the image of Coca-Cola in the control net tab of the automatic UI and select depth as the preprocessor and the model, right? Just to confirm this again. So it will work for anything. It will create a depth map for it. It's as the first pass, and then it will use that depth map to nudge the generation process. So earlier before control net, what was happening is that there was no way to directly nudge the generation process. So now what we can do is give it a input and say that, okay, take this as the depth map and then use it for generation. Or if you have, let's say already have the depth map in a format, if you understand, then you can skip the pre-processing and directly say that, okay, this is the depth map that I'm giving you, or let's say this is the edge detection layout that I'm giving you. And then now you can use it to generate let's say apple for example and then the same image can be used to generate a watermelon as well for example so it will generate a watermelon which will look like an apple because the base frame of reference looks like an apple so that's the beauty of it and these are the areas where we need to change from depth another use case is for using scribble to do creative exploration so let's say like again i i went very lazy here but that's my drawing as you can see master artist on the right hand side um and then i use it to with two simple prompts an ice cream and a bouquet of roses so the same input i can guide to generate an ice cream which looks that way and a bouquet of roses will look that way if i do a banana or an apple then also the model will try its best to put a banana or an apple in that shape however it might not look like a real world one like banana or an apple because it doesn't conform to that shape but the outputs are definitely interesting to try out and look at it creatively, right? So for example, you can create infinite number of food shapes by giving these kind of inputs. Okay. Another example of depth model is what if different people acted in God of War, the first images from God of War, Kratos. So again, very crude prompting, right? I did not pay a lot of attention to fine tune how a face looks like. It's very minimal five, six words description. So for example, this would probably be Virat Kohli uh, dressed as a warrior in God of War. These kind of prompts are there, but as you can see, it generates quite realistic looking input following the same input pose. So as you can see on the shoulder pad and the arm, it falls, it tries to follow almost the same composition because we are using a depth map. The problem with this is, for example, in, in Virat Kohli's image, you can see that the model is trying to put a hand like this. And that's something which is unavoidable because the depth maps also are not a hundred percent accurate depth map because they are generated or inferred from this image. So the model is getting confused thinking that it might be a hand. And that's why it's generating a hand there, but it definitely provides a good starting point to start looking at depth maps and then trying to control the process from there. 
Another use case is for interior design. And with control net, what we can do is just give that depth map. So that, that one is, let's say, you can call it a blender output or a depth map on the left hand most side. And now you can generate different interior settings just by tweaking the inputs a little bit. So you provide, again, you provide this image, say depth, depth, and then you say a futuristic Tron legacy style living room and you get the right most image. You say World of Warcraft or an orc style chair, then you get the center image. Everything made of bamboo furniture, then you get the left and most side chair. So that's how you can creatively keep the same form. And as you can see, all the images are looking very much identical. This was not possible without control net. So let's say if you generate these images four times without control net, without giving a reference, the model will generate good images, good outputs, but they won't be exactly similar to each other. So this is what one more advantage of using this model is. Another good exploration can come from using edge detection maps and scribble to experiment with textiling as well. So all of these textiles basically are generated from stable diffusion again. So it can come in very handy to generate more variety of typography and good style text contents as well. So earlier, this was a limitation in stable diffusion models that it was not able to work on text. But now since, because we are able to provide a structure to the model and provide guidance through that structure, we are able to work with text as well. And as some of you would have already guessed, since it works for text, text it works for logos as well. And it works for any 2D image, which basically, you know, is a JPEG image. So as you can see that you can reimagine the Nike logo having, you know, New York city around built around it. And I have also shared a couple of links, which could be looked at, which are very good reimaginations along the same concept. If you want to get more ideas in terms of how do you use this forward creatively. Another example for using canny slash depth combination in control net, you can use multiple control net models together as well. So you can say that, okay, I want to use 20% canny, which is edge detection and 80% of my depth model I want to use as a reference. So that sort of blending is also now possible since past 20, 25 days. And it allows you for like using the same image as a reference and create very different outputs with very minimal, you know, efforts to make, preserve the same composition. Yeah. Probably the last case for poses virtual photo shoots. So with a technology called dream booth, you can basically have the model understand who you are as a person. And then you can say, okay, okay draw a picture of, let's say Karthik folding, holding hands. And you can give this pose image as a reference, which is also available through, uh, the same control net extension there. And then it can generate an image doing the same pose. So with this for a, let's say human body generation, the opportunities are now endless because now you can take any reference image and have the final image generated in a very similar pose. So this opens a lot of interesting things as well, because before this hands was something everyone was struggling with. And this opens a possibility that now like almost picture perfect hands are very close. You can get to real world drawing of hands and the way you type text here is there is a fancy word called prompt engineering. It's just about telling the model what you want and having a good communication layer between the model. That's all there is to it. And then if you want to explore more, you can try variations of dream booth and control. And that's something which I'm not added right now. And then you can try and follow these two channels and areas to get more understanding in the field of generative AI.